Hi you guys, welcome back to another first impression video. If this is your first one, this is a series where I take a look at an entire sewing pattern collection. This time we are gonna be looking at the McCall's Summer Collection. We're gonna look at every single pattern. We're gonna talk about um, fabrication, like fabric choices you have, fit and fit issues that I may see that might pop up for you. Um, just the kind of like the overall design and any ideas that pop into my head while I'm looking at the patterns too. Um, it's kind of like looking through the little pattern books at the fabric store with a friend. So welcome. This one is the McCall's sewing pattern. What is that? Mrs. Dress Top and Pants. Okay. So we have sizes 8 to 16 and 18 to 26 on this one. Shirt dress and top have short sleeves, collar, front button opening, back yoke, and contrast. View A, short dress has a tie belt, rick rack trim on sleeves, placket and hem. View B has front chest pocket, trim on sleeves, placket and pocket. Pull on pants have contrast, elastic and drawstring, a waistband and narrow hem. Okay, so basically a shirt dress slash kind of like a camp shirt and, you know, pull on pants with trim which is fun. They've always really leaned into kind of like mixing and matching prints with this one. Um, kind of elevating or like even leaning into the kind of like cottage core kind of vibe. I don't know with Rick rack and like a rope belt. It kind of makes sense that you would mix this kind of like florally fabric as well. Right? Like, I don't know. They kind of kind of all goes together to tell a story. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this would look with solid fabrics or with all one print. I guess equally as cute. I'm picturing like a seersucker maybe. That would be like really sweet. You could definitely take it in other directions other than this kind of like mix and match hodgepodge kind of look. You can definitely make it more chic if you did like all black, for example, and white trim. Or like I said, if you did seersucker, that would go really like, you know, nautical. Yeah, you could do some fun things with this. But you have a sleeve, pretty long sleeve, actually. I mean, it's a long short sleeve. Um, a collar without a collar stand. I don't think it has a collar stand. So a little bit easier of a collar construction there. Button band. And yeah, just a little bit above the knee length. Then you have the top. Here's the top with, again, more trim kind of details. Fun, like, little camp shirt vibe. You could definitely make this out of something lightweight like this, like they're illustrated, or all the way up to, like, linen blends and things like that. Also, definitely no collar stand. But this collar has a notch, whereas it didn't look like hers had one, but it might. I just might not be able to see it very well. And then these are the pull-on pants, just like elastic waist drawstring pull-on pants. But they do have this detail, which is a trim. I wonder if the fabric requirements call for all this mixing and matching. Like if they give you quantities for all those different pieces. Yeah, here's the yoke. And then the back is um, got the two different fabrics too. Yeah, it is. It is meant to be like color blocked and stuff. You don't have to, like I was saying before, but yeah, in order to achieve this kind of look, that would be hard to do, right? At a regular fabric store, um, finding all of these fabrics that go really well together. I mean, it's easy enough to do like a seersucker in multiple colors. That's fine. Or like a linen in multiple colors. But to do like a print like this, that's kind of hard to pull off at home. Either way, um, they're, they're suggesting chalet, cotton blends, crepe, lawn, definitely leaning into the more lighter weight fabrics. But like I said, you could take this all the way up into the fall if you wanted. You could do lightweight corduroys. It's just a shirt dress, right? Like we've seen those a thousand times. So um, don't feel pigeonholed into these lighter weight fabrics. If you do want to do something with some structure, I think it would be totally fine, even for the summer. Um, we do have a lot of notions because of the like trim detail they added and then elastic for the pants and then buttons for the, you know, shirt dress. Here's our sizes and then finished garment measurements are on the 
actual pattern themselves so we can't talk about ease and stuff but you know I would say somewhere around three inches in the bust more maybe like five or so in the waist maybe even more than that maybe up to eight and then yeah five ten in the hips maybe but you're gonna be basing it off your bust so start somewhere around two or three inches in the bust um and you should be good to go there but yeah it is a cute little look to start with I do think it's a little intimidating to think about pairing up fabric so if you love the design maybe start off with something a little more solid maybe all one print um and then just keep your eyes open for those fabrics that kind of match i maybe you could check like um the quilting cotton places sometimes they will have like rayons or definitely they'll have lawns that might be what they ended up using here like an art gallery lawn and chose from one collection from them do you know what i mean Okay, here we have a skirt, 8 to 16 and 18 to 26 on the size range, mid-length circle skirts, have narrow hem, waistband with hook and bar and invisible closure, skirts B and C have curved hem and contrast. Wow, okay, so this is just a circle skirt, but it is a tough, tough so um definitely not super easy you're creating these panels and they look on your body like they might just go straight across but they definitely have some curves to them can you see how it's swooping like that so that's sewing a lot of contrast and convex i'm sorry concave and convex curves together it's also a lot of different areas with bias like being sewn on the bias so you just have to be really careful that, you know, your fabric doesn't stretch out or anything. I do think that this rainbowy one, it, uh, that's a little loud. I'm not sure I love that, but I could see how it, I could see how I could see this on someone and be like, wow, that's a really cool skirt. I can also see how I could see it in like more muted tones and maybe it being more my style. Um, but interesting that we have two patterns back to back that, feature color blocking this one only has the two colors same sewing though and then this one is just your simple circle skirt right no no seams in the middle of this anywhere um it is a proper skirt right with a proper waistband zipper and hook and bar closure so it's it's done really well the construction is really good um, you do have this one point here where you're going to want to match those up precisely. That's not even the hard part. It's really all of these curves like this. Someone at Nomi did this recently, right? Didn't they have one similar to this? Yeah. Um, Shally, Cotton Blends, and Lawn. Yep, again, leaning into kind of the lighter weight fabrics. But again, you can go heavier weight. You could do like different shades of chambray, for example, um different shades of linen and um i think it would also be pretty if you going back to the pattern just before this one if you used like a print multiple prints that would also be pretty it would just be a little bit more patchwork a little bit more 70s but still really cute um all you need is one zipper and one hook and bar for the notions and then finished waist measurement has one inch of ease so that makes perfect sense i'm sure the waist i'm sorry the hip um, has tons and tons of ease, so not to worry about that, but, you know, base it off of your waist, get your waist to fit, and then everything else should fall in line after. This should also hit at your natural waist, you know, high up on your body, so the waistband should be straight across. It shouldn't be a curved waistband at all. It should be straight across, so if you see a curved waistband when you go to buy it, scrap that <laughs> and just do, because you don't need a curved waistband at your natural waist. Your body is pretty straight up and down right there, no matter what kind of curves you've got. Okay. So now we've got a little jumpsuit and romper, Mrs. And women's. So 10 to 18 and 20 to 28. So it's really only the middle of the misses and the middle of the women's, okay? Um, I've talked about this before. I think it's a little bit of a, you know, what bait and switch kind of moment where you think, oh my gosh, it's women's and misses, so many sizes. 
but it's not. You still get the same number of sizes. You just get a few sizes of misses and a few sizes of women. So if you happen to be in this one of these size ranges, kudos to you, but I think a lot of us are probably not. Um, I am in the above 18 misses size range. Um, and it's not the same as a 20 women's. The bust cups are bigger. Um, yeah, so there, I, you know, won't harp on that too much more, but that is my thoughts about that. I wish we would have full misses, full women's, even if it has to come in separate envelopes. Okay, corset style romper and jumpsuits have front zipper closure, square neckline, seam details, and sleeveless armholes finished with bias tape. View C has contrast panels. Okay, I feel like we've been down this road, right? We are doing a lot of jumpsuits and finding variations on jumpsuits is getting harder and harder. Um, but this one I do love. I'm a very big 70s girl. This is though, I don't know that I would be 100% comfortable wearing this if I'm being 100% honest. Um, it feels very close fitting, you know, highlighting all the curves, which is fine. But that's a choice. You know what I mean? So I would have to definitely like really be feeling myself to, to pull this one off. Um, I do love the super, super long seams going down princess seams all the way down the front of the leg. I think that's great. Um, really beautiful way to shape the figure. These actually make it easier to fit your curves just because you have more seams to choose from, right? You have these side panels. I don't think there's an actual side seam. There's like more of a side panel. But if you need to nip in your waist, you have all these opportunities to do that. And I'm pretty sure it's on the back as well. Same thing with like thigh measurements and, you know, over your butt. You just have an opportunity to let things out, pull things in and really, you know, contour this to your body, which is really nice. But yeah, I think it's kind of like a um, hot, hot suit. Is that what they're called? hot something, you know, where it's just body conforming the whole, pretty much the whole way until you get to these, um, flare legs, but the flare is really quite beautiful. Yeah. I just can't see myself running, but that's just in my head. That's just me. I can wear this to Target. It's fine. I can totally wear it to Target. Here's the women's version. They made it in a darker denim and highlighted the, um, top stitching a lot more. Um, which obviously creates all of these style lines. Something about the women's version's flair, though, is not reading the same as hers. Maybe it starts lower. The kick starts lower than hers. Or maybe it's because we can't really see the top stitching. But yeah, it almost feels like, well, you know what, too? Like a lot of the women's, a lot of actual plus size bodies are more petite than Mrs. And so it maybe makes sense that this starts higher up on her leg because she's, she has shorter legs. So instead of them adjusting the length from the middle of the leg, like they should have, they just made it shorter down here. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? So hers is kicking out above the knee, whereas the Mrs. sizes is kicking out below the knee. But if it's because she has longer, this girl has shorter legs, they would have need to shorten the pants. No, that's not making sense. It would be the opposite. Either way, I think you guys understand what I'm saying. Like the kick out is a lot higher here, which I don't think is as, I mean, look at it here. Maybe because she has an actual hip. So the, 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 what am I trying to say? Like the proportions feel off. If it were to start the kick out down here, you know what I mean? Maybe, you know what? There's a chance that this, I don't know. I don't know them. I don't know their measurements, nothing. But there's a chance maybe she has longer legs and a shorter torso. I don't know. But that would be something if I were in a women's size and or I knew I had shorter than average legs, I would definitely be paying attention to where the flare begins on my body. And then you have one that's just shorts. That's just like fully like close fitting the whole way. Then they did this one with the mixed denims. That's cute. 
Yeah, I'm going to say the fit on the Mrs. model looks good for a fit model, right? Um, there are some issues for sure. Um, it's a little long in the crotch length, sorry, crotch depth. Um, but overall, for a fit model, for a fit sample, it looks pretty good. Also, I lied. There is definitely a side seam. So another opportunity for you to fit this a little bit better. So fitting for a fit model, pretty darn good. You can see it's a little bit big through here, but all things considered, everything looks on the up and up here. Um, same for the women's model. Um, again, a little bit big through here, maybe even a little bit long by a touch. Um, but yeah. We are getting some drag lines here, but again, for a fit model, it looks pretty, pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. I think that most of us would walk out of the house after making this and feel, and if it fit us just like this, we would all be very proud of ourselves as we should be. Okay. So cotton blends, denim, linen, and twill. Yeah, really only kind of like your mid to heavyweight stable fabrics. You can get a stretch denim or a stretch twill to help with some of this, like, you know, the parts where it's super fitted. Um, give yourself some more stretch there, but no finished garment measurements. Um, they're going to be on the envelope. But again, I think if you start with your bust um, and you use all of these seam lines to your advantage, you could get a really close fit even without doing a ton of blending, you know, like you can blend between one size, but, um, you can get even more precise fitting just by using the seam allowances that are given in all of these different seam lines. Okay. Now we have a caftan. So caftans are having a moment. All my sewing students are asking about caftans. They want to make caftans. I'm going to be teaching a caftan class at the Original Sewing and Quilt Expo in Dallas. Um, if you're going to be there, if you're in town, um, come take it. But uh, yeah, caftans are are having a moment in fashion for sure. And I love a caftan. I think they're great. Um, this one comes in sizes extra small to 2XL. There's a sew along that Raven did. Button, ha button front caftans have plackets, gathers at waist, collar bands, collar stands, and collar. View C has contrasted bands, collar, collar stand, and placket. Okay, so a little half placket with a band here. This reminds me a lot of the Charlie Caftan by Closet Core Patterns, um, but executed in a way that's a little bit easier for the home sewist. That pattern is deceiving. It looks the closet core one looks really simple, but you get into it and you're like, wow, this is actually really hard. So this is a really fun way to play on stripes, right? I mean, look at how they've just kept turning the stripes um, off green, on green, off green, on green, and um, really achieve something really great here. So you do have the collar stand, which is this like Mandarin type of collar. Um, this caftan too, a lot of caftans, you know, don't have a lot of visual interest. It's just one rectangle. So this one has this, this opportunity here. It also has this panel here. And then it looks like it's sewn up. Like this is an actual seam where some caftans will have it being open here and just stitched down here somewhere. So this one, yeah, this one has a lot of fun things to work with. I love this idea of mixing stripes and florals. Um, again, you'd have to find a really good coordinating fabric. Joanne could be hit or miss with that. Your best bet would probably be either somewhere like StyleMaker, um, or like an art gallery, you know, lawn and picking two fabrics from one collection. But again, with the color blocking, they're really leaning into that. I wish this were a pocket. I don't think it is, but that would be cool if there was like a pocket built in somewhere. The one thing a caftan doesn't have is pockets. But yeah, how great, right? Throw that on and you can really dress these up, dress these down a million different ways. This is just slowly, slowly becoming more and more my style. Whereas I would have fell over for that jumpsuit a few years ago. I don't know. It's This is just more appealing to me now. I don't know if it's age. I don't know if it's comfort. I don't know if it's because I'm just so tired of being hot. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know what it is, but this is definitely more my name. So Shally, Gauze, Georgette, and Voile for sure. Um, you do need something a little bit drapey. It doesn't have to be lightweight though. It just has to be drapey. Um, and then you just need five buttons and no finished garment measurements. Although it does kind of look like a rectangle. So you could argue that this is your bust waist and hip measurement final. You could argue that, um, there might be some variation there, but yeah, that one's really cool and fun. I love that one. That would end up in my stash for sure. Okay, now we've got this dress. This is the Mrs. version. There's also, oh, Mrs. and Women's all in one again. So 10 to 18 and 20 to 28. Easy to sew dresses have ruched bodice, elastic neckline and waist, narrow hem, and length and sleeve variations. So kind of a take on a milkmaid dress, right? Every once in a while, McCall's specifically the brand McCall's will come out with a deep V situation. And I'm always shocked by how popular they are. Everyone's always like, oh my gosh, what about like a bra? How do you wear a bra? How do you wear a bra? And then they sell out of these. You know what I mean? So you guys care, but you guys also don't care. And I love that. Um, but this one's really interesting. It has all this elastic in it, which is going to help A, prevent this bias cut from stretching out. B, help it contour to your body, which is nice. And C, provide support for your bust. Um, it has two rows of elastic, under, of elastic underneath the bust line. Then a little like yoke type of thing. And then, or I guess kind of like a waist band kind of thing. And then two more rows of elastic. I do think all of from here down is one pattern piece, I would think. And then you just add in the casings and then it creates like a visual waistband. But all of this is one piece. It's not a set in sleep. So that makes that kind of cool. I kind of love that. Um, midi length. There is a little pocket situation also happening. Then you have the flutter sleeve, which is just this without the elastic and shorter. And then you have the halter top. Now this makes me think that it's a raglan. So we'll have to look closer to see what is going on there? Is there, oh, there is a seam right here. Okay. So it is a raglan sleeve. This is an all one piece. There's like a bodice piece and then you add the sleeve on. This feels low, but it's not. It's fully, like I'm trying to picture this if it were the halter version. It's fully encompassing her breast. So no, it's not ill placed at all. I think it's just such a deep V that having this much of a of space of sleeve feels off, but it's definitely not. I mean, you could argue that it could go up like this, but then you might even have a weirder shape. I think this is pretty. Here's the women's version. So one thing that always gets me about these underbust seams is when they don't actually cup the entire bust. This one needs to be a little bit longer on her. So that this seam sits fully, fully underneath her bust line. It's close, but not, not quite there. So this one needs to be under the bust and this one needs to be at the waist. And so that's what I'm always struggling with is because I'm really short through here. So my, when I do these, my versions end up being like one inch long at the side seam because I'm lengthening and then reducing. But yeah, that one's really cute. I can see myself making that one for sure. And, you know, a really pretty halter. What's the back like? Okay, pretty. Hers is probably a little bit too long. It looked fine in the bust here, but I think through here is too long. This is sitting at her natural waist, but can you see how it's bubbling there? So the same thing is happening in her back. Like this is wanting to ride up and sit at her natural waist, which is causing this little bubble. So this whole thing needs to be shorter. And then hers is kind of doing it a little bit too. This is, act honestly, this is probably her natural waist, which I know is wild. So for her, she would be lengthening the front and shortening the back. You know, so this would be a little bit higher. And then she could pull this thing up to here. Yeah, length is one of those things that 
it's tough to wrap your head around sometimes. We didn't get to see the back of the halter one. I think it's literally just a halter though. Yeah, so it comes up here. Well, now that bus seam does seem a little bit like higher. This doesn't seem as long as it did on the image. So who knows? Um, but either way, this is really pretty and it ties around here. But you see the intent is a million percent for this to be at your waistline. That's the smallest part. It's not a drop waist. And this is supposed to be under the bust. So might have to play around with length in this one, but width wise of the elastics doing a lot of work for you. So you shouldn't have to play around with that too, too much. Um, let's see, shall cotton blends, gauze and poplin. Yeah, all of your lightweight, pretty structured fabrics they have there. Well, Shally's lightweight. Um, I think depending on the version and also like how difficult you want to make this, the harder, the lighter weight fabrics will be more difficult to sew. I think this one could even, this one down here, the halter could even be pretty out of like a quilting cotton. I know I'm not the hugest fan of sewing clothes out of quilting cotton, but something like this could be really pretty for that. All right, then you need bias tape, a, a lot of elastic, um, and that's it. Finished bust. Yeah, they're called, okay, so hmm, how do I explain this? There is a lot of ease in the bust, right? Because this is all kind of part of it. There is for sure that much ease in the bust. Mm, it's just allocated differently. I don't, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining that, but I do really think that there are 15 inches of ease. I think the more important thing is if you're going to make this to figure out the elastic waistbands, the horizontal ones, figure out if that piece is separate then I would start with that and make that like close to your actual body measurement, maybe with like six inches of ease and then fill in the bust and hip after that. But if you can see that, I'll go back to the line drawings. If you can see the line drawings here, like it is a roomy, it is roomy across the bust. It's not fitted. You know, this is your bust line here. It is roomy. Okay. So don't be caught off guard by that, but definitely maybe start here, like finish garment measurements around here somewhere and then base it off of your bust. You don't want it to be too big in the bust, but 15 inches of ease sounds like a lot of ease in the bust. I get it. I know it's kind of confusing sizing on this one. Maybe I'll grab it and see what I would do and then share that with you guys. Would that be helpful? Because I do think it could be really cute, but the, the sizing could be confusing. Hopefully it's just good right out of the envelope and we don't have to make a lot of adjustments or overthink it too much, but you know how these brands are. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're just like way off. All right. So Brandy Jones newest pattern on her off shoulder dress has circle flounce around the neckline, boned bodice, lace up back with cording and grommets, zipper closure and side slit at skirt, customized with lace in so a long video. Okay. Then sizing is 6 to 14, 16 to 24. Um, Brandy is known for kind of like this, you know, corseted romantic kind of vibe. So this is on brand for her. And this little whatever this is called, where it comes to a point in the bottom, is very on trend right now with dresses, with corseted dresses. Um, this is just a really pretty like... Um, kind of modern take on a design that's been done for years and years. The little circle flounce is so pretty. Um, if you've never done a circle flounce before, it's a little, it's like a little baby circle skirt that you're putting around your shoulders. So picture that. Um, but the pattern piece is usually cut like a spiral. It's wild, but it's a lot of fun to sew. Um, she makes these for herself, her samples. So of course they all look great. We do have some boning in here. You know, I don't see any fit issues. I hardly ever do with her stuff. Um, also, you can get a lot of fitting through here. You can see, though, here's... I do have one gripe. The... Oh, I don't know what they call it in corseting, but in, like, a jean, they would call it a fly front. 
So in this little panel that's supposed to go underneath all the lace, that should reach across. Um, it's not. So that's making me think that this is a little bit too small for her. And she tied it as tight as she could, but it's still slipping. Like you shouldn't be able to see any skin right there. The only thing, the smallest, smallest thing. And that could be just because she was moving around a lot. I don't know. Okay, Shally. Shally? Uh, I mean, kudos to you if you pull this off in Shally. Cotton blends, crepes, and lawn, those feel a lot more safe to me. Um, then you're going to line it with either lining fabrics, which again, kudos to you if you pull this off. I mean, lining fabrics are slippery and shifty, but you can also do it in a wall, which again, I would recommend. <laughs> um, then you need all of these notions to pull off the corset. And then we have half inch um, seam allowance in the bust. We have half inch in the waist. All that makes sense. Perfect. Right out of the gate. All that looks really good. Next, we have this number, which again, the color block, they were like, all right, we have a theme. It's kind of like um, Top Chef where you have a secret ingredient. This one um, for McCall's, they have a, you know, a secret design feature and it's color blocking. <laughs> um, so Mrs. Knit Jumpsuits and Dress. Floor length jumpsuits and dress have panel seaming details, one inch strap, scoop neckline, and a shelf bra. Okay. Thank you for that. Views B and C have contrast panels. Sizing is 4 to 12 and 12 to 20. Okay. So beautiful neckline. I love a one inch strap scooped with almost like a rectangular with rounded edges neckline. So pretty. Um, again, it is a knit. This feels a little long. There's a seam here. Do you see how on this one it should be at the natural waist? Hers is a little bit low. Like her hand where the like the webbing of your thumb and fing forefinger is, that's just inherently when you put that on your body, that's usually where your natural waist is at. So this is a little long <laughs> by like four inches maybe. Um... And then it flares out into this really interesting wide leg pant. I can see myself in this. I can see myself in this. This one, look at all these style lines. So if you don't do it in color blocking, you still get all the beautiful cascading um, seam lines. That's so pretty. And then this is the dress version, which, hello, that looks like a full on gown. Like you could make that and wear some wear that somewhere really fancy. Just throw on some fabric with some glitter and call it a day. Really, really pretty. I love the seam lines on this. Okay, here's the back. Yep, again, too long. Um, and it's also kind of pulling. But I think it's more of the weight of the fabric not being supported. I'm trying to think, how would you support that? You'd have to add a waist stay, right? That's how you would normally do it in like, you know, ready to wear and in fancy clothes. Um, but in a knit garment, you can't really do a waist stay. I don't think the straps are too long. I think it's kind of the nature of the beast. I mean, maybe, maybe if they raised this to where it was supposed to be, it would alleviate some of the weight on that a little bit. But yeah, your only other option really is to put elastic in this and make it an elastic waist, like holding on to your waist. But since it's free flowing, that's a little bit hard to do. Um... And I hope that that's not super discouraging. I can't tell if I'm discouraged. <laughs> I'm trying to like weigh my own emotions as I'm explaining this to you, but I don't think it looks bad. Again, I, I tend to be very overcritical whenever I look at sewing patterns. When I know that if I bought this in a store or saw this on someone else, like out and about, I wouldn't not I would not really be noticing how heavy it is. But maybe that's something to think about for sure when you get your fabric, which are, what are they recommending? Cotton knits, interlock, jerseys. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously some, the, the jerseys that are going to be more stable are going to be a heavier weight. Um, 
There are structured uh, knits that are not as heavy, but maybe it's best to lean into like a lightweight, like ITY or something. Um, Cause I mean, it's a lot of pant, right? It's a lot of pant, a lot of weight there. Interesting to think about. Maybe you actually want something with not as much or no vertical stretch. Okay, now my brain is starting to turn on. And for those of you that have been screaming at your computer screens, okay, I'm with you now. If you did not have as much vertical stretch, it wouldn't have anything to pull down. It wouldn't have anything to to stretch on. There would be no stretch here, so it would act as a woven. Maybe that's what you need to be looking for, is something that has not even a ton of horizontal stretch. I mean, there's not a ton of horizontal stretch going across you either. Um, maybe, maybe zero inches of ease here at the bust, but not fitted at the waist, not fitted at the hip. So just paying attention to vertical stretch and making sure there's none and maybe even minimal horizontal stretch would be helpful in executing this better, no matter what this stretch gauge says, which I don't know what it says because they don't tell us. But it does look like, okay, so they it has positive ease, which is a problem. Um, it actually has quite a bit of positive ease. By the looks of it, you could make this out of a woven. They say there's one inch of ease at the waist, not on that model. Um, and then two and a half inches of ease, maybe, maybe on her there was. Um, yeah, with this one, I would play around with fabrication more than fit. But definitely shorten that bodice for sure. Now, when you shorten the bodice, remember, you probably have to lengthen the rise. So whatever you shorten here, you have to lengthen here to make sure it goes around you. I, I can't tell. It looks like the crotch curve is fine, but there's so much volume here. It's hard to tell if it's too low or not. Again, you're trying on your own kind of body. Okay, now we have a Mrs. Short and Pants. 4 to 12, 14 to 22 on the size range here. These shorts and pants are perfect for making a statement. Circle shorts and pants have a ruffle hem. Ruffle hem? I don't think so. Back yoke, front pockets, waistband with belt loops, fly front zipper, and button closure view C has contrast on the sides. Not the color blocking again. Okay, I don't think they meant ruffle hem. I think they meant, I don't know what they meant because it's definitely not a ruffle. But these circle shorts, okay, if I hadn't had a student come to me a few years ago wanting to make circle shorts out of Ankara fabric, I would have been like, what? This is crazy. But those shorts turned out so stinking cute. I think we used a pattern off of Etsy, maybe. They turned out adorable. Um, but if it weren't for that, I might think, wow, cuckoo, what a concept. But I've seen this before. And... It looks really cute, I think. I think it's kind of adorable how it looks like a A-line skirt, kind of. <laughs> I don't know. I really like it. Um, and then to have the pants version out of something like a um, like a rayon chambray or something. Please, are you kidding me? I'm not so big on the wide leg and then short. I either like wide and long or wide shorts. I don't like wide cutoff. I don't know. To me, it just proportions are funny, but this is an adorable outfit, an absolutely adorable outfit. Yeah, love the pants too. Okay, here's the back. Okay, so you do have a dedicated yoke. This is sitting a little bit below her natural waist, which could be intentional to be one inch below her natural waist. Um, you have the yoke, and then because it is a circle, you are going to have some flare, right? That I think that that's normal for it to flare away from your body. I don't know how much of that is normal. Um, oh, shoot. I, I do that in every single freaking video. I don't know how much of that is normal for it to flare like that, nor do I fully understand how to prevent it from doing that. So until I can under get my head wrapped around a circle and a crotch coming together, I would just live with it like this and it would be fine. I do think that the side seams are in the right place. They are straight down, perpendicular to the floor. 
as are these. This seam here looks to be straight up and down too. So it might just be nature of the beast to have this when you're making circle shorts. I can't think of any other way around it. If you have experience with this and you want to chime in, please leave a comment. Enlighten us. Okay. Shally, then that would help. Okay. A lighter weight fabric would definitely make it more drapey and fall in on your body. But if you go to cotton blends, definitely denim, definitely linen, you're going to get that little like pokey outy part. Technical term. Um, and then one zipper and one button. Here's your sizing. And then the waist has two inches of ease. Which makes me again think that it's supposed to sit one inch below the waist. It doesn't say here, but it will say somewhere, maybe on the actual instruction. Somewhere it says it. If it's going to say it, it'll say it there. Um, and then the hip has lots of these, eight inches, because it's like a circle. But I also wanted to look at the line drawings to see. Okay, so that is not a seam. No, it is a seam. There's a side. There's okay. So there are like princess seams added in. So I wonder if all of this contributes to the circle, or if the circle really only lives here on the outer parts. No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to just make it and let report back. Let you guys know. Um. Um. Okay. Interesting. Melissa Watson has come out with a jacket i almost feel like she's just like let me get all these basics out no matter what season it is i'm just going to release one and put no thought into the wearability of it during that season this is i would never wear this in the summer um it's more like a fall pattern to me but these are melissa watson is um the daughter of patty palmer who helped develop the tissue fitting method so it'll teach you how to fit this in all the right places. If you need a full bust adjustment, um, it'll help you do that. It'll help you with arm adjustment. So if you are looking to learn more about that, these are great patterns to get to learn with. Um, but they do tend to be a little bit basic. This one has a shirt style jacket, has collar, shoulder pads, large front pockets with flaps, front button closure, back yoke, Shirred elastic waist and long two-piece sleeves with cuffs and buttons. So the only really kind of interesting design detail is this one here, which is really cute, but again, not for summer. Yeah, it is actually a really darling design. Um, I hope I remember it in the fall. Okay, fabric recommendations are going to be cotton blends, dupioni. Um, that would make it like a little dressy fancy. Fail, lightweight denim, linen, raw silk, taffeta. Okay. And then 8 to 26 on the size range. Finished bust has 9 inches of ease. Yep. Finished waist has 11. So pretty oversized. But again, they're going to talk you through fitting the shoulders, fitting your bust, so I don't know. I kind of tend to trust their finished garment measurements. Maybe they make it a little bit oversized with the intention of helping you size it down properly. Hard to say, but that's what I think. All right. Now we have this men's polo. Um, I don't understand men's sizing, but this one's small to 2XL. Fitted polo shirts have partial button or zipper closure, collars, sleeve variations, and optional front pocket. View C has contrast on collar, pockets, and bands. So yeah, your traditional like little quarter zip men's polo. Oh, or button front too. Long sleeve. Yep. Collar blocking again. Not the mandal, not the mandal, not the mandal, go away. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Here's the back. Cotton knits, PK is probably what's most traditional in um, polo shirts, N interlock also. Yeah, I've been seeing like when we go to Nordstrom and just like look around, I've been seeing men's sets using polo shirts or kind of like a camp shirt combo um out of toweling that seems to be very popular right now so if your man's super trendy maybe he'd like that 
All right, here's the women's version of that same jumpsuit pattern. Let's see what fit issues or not are we going to come across here or if I'm able to learn anything more about the kind of the pulling of the back especially hers here is her waist seam here is her natural waist so it doesn't matter whether you're misses or women's you gotta shorten this all of this and that's obnoxious but that's what that's what it's gonna take um then there's the dress okay now hers does not seem to be well it does see that little what looks like a top stitching seam that's the outer shell being pulled down and what you can see is the um shelf bra this black here is the shelf bra so again maybe they just used a fabric that had like you know a little bit too much vertical stretch and that's why it's pulling so much uh, i don't even think putting um interfacing in the straps would have helped i don't think it's a matter of the strap stretching i think it's a matter of the pants the weight of the pants pulling on this seam and so all of this should be the same that we looked at before okay so good it wasn't uh well i think it's a technically good that it wasn't a unique issue to the missus pattern um because then you know it's a pattern issue and it's not a you issue <laughs> that makes sense okay laura ashley mrs dress and top vintage mccall's 1970s laura ashley dress or top sewing pattern buttoned dress or top has patch pockets and straps buttoned to band okay um sizing is 6 to 14 16 to 24 straps button band pockets i don't know oh are these little oh there's there are little buttons right there okay so the straps are buttoned on and it's also button front you just have a little basic band here and then your dress with the big pockets this one is a top with short shorts and this one is long maxi i love it with the little necktie the pockets are the real star of the show here. Um, I'm a little bit mm, on the fence about it in a print. I think I kind of love it like this. This to me feels like the way it was intended or even like a stripe or something. But I get Laura Ashley is supposed to be like whimsical, you know, florally, like little fairy angels. Um, but this feels like it's trying to be like Lily Pulitzer or something and it's not quite sweet enough to me it is cute though it is cute but i would make it out of a solid or something really really 70s ditzy floral shally cotton blends lightweight cotton lightweight linen and pk yeah lightweight with a little bit of structure except for this shally version uh, we have half an inch of ease in the bust a whole bunch in the waist and a whole bunch in the hip so um all of that makes perfect sense. Super cute and sweet. And I kind of like, I don't know what you guys think, but I kind of like how the top is almost like a tunic so that when you wear it with short shorts, it's like, is it a romper? Is it not? That kind of thing. This smile is scaring me though. So let's move on from her. <laughs> Um, next we have this guy, Ooh, women, it says misses, but is it? Yeah, 8 to 16 and 18 to 26 on the size range. I don't know why I thought it looked women's. I guess because it's so loose fitting. Easy to sew, asymmetric tiered sundresses, have gathering, side pockets and narrow hem. View A has spaghetti shoulder straps and contrast. View B has an asymmetric hem. Okay, another entry for collar blocking. And we've seen this before, right? This is nothing new. They just seem to be alternating them between knits and wovens, knits and wovens, knits and wovens. And you can see it's, it's, this one has a curve and a gather. It's not going to be the most fun to sew, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. But 
when you're done, especially with a version like this with this high low, oh, I think it would be really, really, really stunning. It's just like you just got to get through the grind of it. It will be a grind. Um, it's very loose fitting. There's a spaghetti strap. I just love that version. I adore that version so much. Here's the back. Yeah, you can just see how loose fitting it is on her. Um, it does seem to fit everywhere else. I love how it cuts in on the shoulder. This might be a little short. Um, how did it look in the front? Eh, it might be okay. It's hard to tell with their arms so close to their bodies. Um, but it might be a little bit pulling in this way. Like if it were cut a little bit more open, I don't know what the word is, um, which is really easy to pull off because there's no sleeves. Um, and then the rest of it, yeah. I mean, all of these seam lines seem to be in the right place, right? This one's starting at her natural waist, scooping down. This one starts at high hip and scoops down to low hip. Um, and then this one should be like around the knee slash thigh area. That all looks proportional and great. I kind of love it. Cotton blends, gauze, yes. Lightweight sateen, poplin, and wool. All of those. All of those. I I would love B and I would make B in a second, I think. I would really have to be in the mood for it though. <laughs> um, and so yeah, there are five inches of ease in the bust. So if you're not somebody that likes, I mean, is a tent dress, it's not ever going to have shape. You're not going to be able to like execute shape. But if you don't want it to be so big on you, you know, size down one or two even. Um, I would, let's see, I think I'm like a, what would I be? I think I'm an 18 in Mrs. McCall's. And so I could go down to, yeah, I could go down to a 14 or 16. You know what it ends up depending on? This. Yeah. So if I go down to a 14, 16, I'm in the small size range. If I buy the larger size, 18 is the smallest I could make. So I'd probably get this one and then I'd have those two options there, which feels wild, me buying the smaller, smaller of the two. That hasn't happened in a very, very, very long time. Okay, Brandy's got a bikini and a skirt. 4 to 12 and 14 to 22. Perfect summer beach set for a day to night look. Front knot bikini top has adjustable back, sorry, adjustable straps and back tie. High rise bottoms have ruched V and ruched V front and back. Elastic waist mock wrap skirt has front opening side gathers a narrow hem. And there is a sew along for this. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, just a little like twist top bikini with I think what looks like zero support. So that's a choice. <laughs> it's literally like she kind of just it's like a toga, like she just wrapped it around and hoped for the best. Which for some people, that's fine. For a lot of people, that's probably a risky move. Um, you do have this little ruching at the front and the back, which I'm assuming is really, really cute and adorable. And then this is just like a mock wrap skirt. This feels kind of like a, I gotta say, it doesn't feel like a lot of real, real thought went into this. I mean, there, there is this line here, which is sexy and attractive, but like practicality of this bra and also like the fact that we could probably make this pattern on our own feels a little not worth the money that this is going to cost you to buy. There's a lot better swim tops out there. And like I said, you can probably find a free pattern for that skirt on the internet somewhere. Yeah, here's the ruching in the back. I do like the cut of the bottom. This is fine. Yeah, I, let's look at the um, notions and see if there's bra strap and sliders and rings. And then elastic for the bikini bottom and <laughs> and uh, elastic for the skirt. Literally no notions for the bra top. Like the cups. Literally none. Um, stretch knits like swimwear knit. That makes sense. And then I don't really fully under understand swimwear. 
but this one has two inches of positive ease. That feels, oh, this is for the skirt. That's for the skirt. So you get no finished measurements for the bikini. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, mm, I, I wouldn't recommend. Go for it if you want, you know, by all means. But I would be very scared to go anywhere. Like, it literally anywhere in this top and not feel like I was going to, you know, lose it. <laughs> literally and figuratively. Okay, this is some men's rash guards and shorts. This is the sizing. Gosh, no. Everybody knows we're not doing freaking below the knee board shorts. Every girl wants their guy in the shorty shorts. The rash guards are nice though. I thought this was a whale. It's a boogie board. I thought he had a float. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, the rash guards are great. Those shorts are awful. Please don't make those. Please, please. Or make them, but make this part, like, way shorter. Even this inseam feels long, right? Even if they were to end there, that even feels long to me. I like the shorty shorts. What can I say? Although, you know, he'd be embarrassed if I told you, if he knew I told you this. But he has nice legs, so that's what I like to see. Okay, now we have this fun little, very unlike McCall's set. Knit dress. 6 to 14, 16 to 24. Easy to sew knit dresses. I cut out detail in the front and length and sleeve variations. View A dress has halter neckties and O-ring detail. View B and C have front cut out. Okay, not impossible to sew. It looks more complicated than it is, I think. But yeah, that's pretty. I kind of love the shrugged version. This one's not so bad. This one feels a little... I don't know, like cheap or something? Prom dress, maybe? But I like that. That's really sexy. Oh, and then they have the little metal. That's a cute detail. I wonder if that's going to be in the notions. Um, stretch knits only, obviously. So cording and elastic. No, they don't. But you can buy those. I think they're called... Shoot... Uh, they're not stops. Oh, metal cording. Uh, I can't remember. Somebody please leave it in the comments for us. Um, okay. We are getting waist and hip finish measurements and that's it. Okay. One inch in the waist and four ish in the hip. Why aren't we getting bust? Cause it's too hard to measure. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's really cute, though. I kind of really like it. I think that would be fun to sew and make and wear. Probably wouldn't wear it everywhere, but nice to have on hand for a cute little date night. All right, now we've got a shirt dress. Yep. Sizes 8 to 16 and 18 to 26. Button front dress features top stitching details, spread collar, side pockets, double stitch hem. View A dress has long, I'm oh, sorry, is sleeveless armholes finished with bias tape. View B has short sleeves. View C has long sleeves with cuffs. So it's a, it's a 365 dress. You can make it to wear throughout the year. Definitely some like um, Western kind of vibes with this detail, this yoke detail and the top stitching. Right? Here's the sleeveless one. And the sleeved one. I think the sleeved one is the cutest. I don't know why. This feels... I don't know what the word... I, I hate the word matronly. Like, what does that even mean? But it feels a little... Maybe, like, basic or ordinary or something. That one's okay, especially on the fabric that you got. But for some reason, this one just makes me feel like this feels uh, more fashion-y to have a, like a, to have it be like, a, what am I trying to say? From here up, like legitimately like a shirt. And then from here down, it's like 
not even like a shirt dress where it's just like straight up and down. I don't know. I don't know. Something about this is just calling my name more than the other ones. I don't know why. There may not be a good reason, but there's the back. And this is one of those examples if you're a pear shape where in the stores, these would never fit you because the waist would not be wide enough or the top would be too big, but we can make them on our own. Maybe that's why I'm like so in love with these kinds of dresses because I can't buy them in the store. Cotton blends, denim, linen, and poplin. Yep. Buttons and bias tape. And then, yeah, pretty roomy in the bust. Seven and a half inches. Very roomy in the waist. Um, yeah, I'd say there's a good six inches there. That makes sense, especially like in the back. Right? It's roomy at the bust for sure. You can size down. Just be careful of the shoulder. You know, you don't want that to be too small um, or the bicep to be too small. But yeah, that's another cute one. This one for me, construction wise, is all in the collar, which sometimes I'm in the mood for, sometimes I'm not. But everything else about that would come together super quickly. All right, now we have this number. Um, Mrs. Tops, 6 to 14, 16 to 24. Flared peplum tops with lined bodices have bustier details, sweetheart neckline, invisible back zipper, narrow hem. View Z top has sleeves that can be worn on or off the shoulder and has a contrast gathered overlay. Wow. And then Brittany did a sew along. Whoa. Okay. Um, definitely like skater vibes ice skater figure skating vibes but also like why wouldn't you just lengthen this and make it a dress I don't get the peplum part of it I don't get I don't know I don't get it's like a peplum and a tunic it's a very long peplum so why not just make it a skosh longer and have like a little mini dress but that's just me but I do like the cup. I like that it's a three-piece cup. I like that all of this seaming here is really nice. No horizontal seam. And even this is like sweet. I don't know. This is kind of cool. I think you got to not fully take in the styling of this. Okay. Um, choices were made. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, making it look a little... 50s but also a little prom but also a little there's just a lot happening a lot of different things being mixed up here um that option's not too much better what do I see it in yeah I see it in a solid something heck I even see it in a denim but I see everything in denim I just I could wear denim every single day Maybe not in the form of jeans, but in some other way. Should I have an entirely denim wardrobe? Could that be like my my new aesthetic? They're recommending Dupioni, Satin, Satin, and Taffeta. So they're kind of leaning into the, the plasticky, you know, uh, fancier, shinier sparklier types of fabrics but you definitely don't have to do that you can make this out of just about anything mid-weight and pretty stable um, and then you can like they said overlay it with tulle lining you need one invisible zipper and then we've got two and a half inches of ease in the bust that feels like a lot for like a bustier style but you do have the center back seam so you could take it in a little bit there and then your waist is two inches of ease. Yeah. Try and see it more like this. Unless like, like that's, I don't know. It's just the, the top to bottom, the styling's weird on that. But these are a little bit cuter, right? Right? <laughs> I don't know. I think so. But again, I wouldn't bother making it into a top and then, and then having to figure out how to pair it with pencil pants or something. I would make it into a dress. I would lengthen it to a dress for sure. Yeah. Okay. Now we're looking at, we're going to skip the kids and we're going to go to this vintage nineties. 
vintage McCall's 90s sarong dress has two lengths sewing <laughs> in two lengths. Set of straight fitting dresses have bias tape forming waistline for oh my gosh, forming waistline casing for elastic, shaped front hemline for walking ease, front drape sewn into right side seam and tie sewn into left side seam at waist. Okay, so it's like a mock wrap t-shirt dress. 4 to 12, 12 to 20, 3 hours of sewing, supposedly. It's knit, I think it said, right? So it's a grown-on sleeve top or sleeveless with an elastic casing at the waistline and then this thing like the sarong like mock wraps over this is all one piece and these just these flaps come together to make a um sarong i think this could be super chic super super chic um not a ton of photos but you can see a little bit more here how it comes together i think it's super cute you could definitely make it even out of like a sheer weight fabric and have it as a swim cover Charlie's Charmeuse Crepe de Chine, Handkerchief Linen, Jersey, Lightweight Crepe, Lightweight Linen. Oh, it's it's woven or knit. That's even better. Silk, Silk Jacquard, Soft Cotton, Cotton Blends, Tissue Fail. All of these would work. Now, if I did it in any of these silks and stuff, I would love to do it in, on the bias, but that would take a ton of fabric. But you could do it. Um, and then finish measurements. Yeah, one, oh no, no, sorry. Three and a half in the bust. Uh, 10 in the waist. That's pre-elastic. And then only a little bit in the hip. So it's definitely like, um, loose fitting in the top, close fitting in the waist, and semi-fitted in the hip. So pairs typically don't love to wear stuff like that because it hides the smaller parts of our body. But I think if you lean into it, it could be really sexy. I like that one. Okay, baby hats and dresses, doll clothes. Then we have this 1980s jumpsuit, which, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's this one. It's the one we all remember. <laughs> the sizing is 6 to 14, 16 to 24, vintage McCall's 1980s dress and jumpsuit sewing pattern. Sized for stretch knits. Dress or longer or shorter jumpsuit has extended shoulders, obviously. Shoulder pads, duh. Front and back shaped waistline that come to that point in the front. Um, top stitching and full gathered skirt, shorts, or tapered pants. All garments may be worn with mock wrap bodice in front or back so you just turn that jumpsuit right around who cares about a crotch curve in the back versus the one in the front that seems odd but we all know this we all well not everybody watching but anybody who's over the age of 35 definitely over the age of 40 we remember this I don't know. I kind of don't hate it. Don't be mad at me. But I kind of, it, maybe it's a nostalgia thing. But I think it would be fun to wear something like this again. And for sure with the socks and the slippers. Like a million percent. I mean, why not? Yeah, it's exactly like it was. Look at these little tapered pants. The skirt is the easiest one to pull off. You know, modernizing it. And... You know, this one would be fun too. I might keep the, I would do it with the wrap in the front, maybe more so than the, I don't know. I don't know. I think that would be so much fun to sew. Um, stretch knits only, such as cotton knits, jersey, lightweight double knits, stretch velour, stretch terry. Wow. I think modernizing it would really just come in the way of fabrication, right? I mean, this is full on 80s well, that little like I don't know zoomed in terrazzo kind of print is fully fully 80s but we could modernize it somehow I don't know I just don't know if it'd be like the most flattering but I almost don't care 
this little pointy thing almost feels like, you know, a little, a little like basket for my belly. <laughs> a little comfy little place to, you know, for it to nestle. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I think it could be fun. It could be one of those things you just throw on for fun, you know? Hmm, maybe I'm just in a good mood today. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll be kicking myself later going, what were you thinking? I can't believe you said you would actually make that. Um, dolls, uh, aprons, tote bags, and then this dress. Have we seen these? This was, this was early spring, right? Yes, we saw all these. I think so. I can't remember. We had to have seen these. I remember that one for sure. And this one. Okay, so that's it. That's McCall's Summer. What do we think? I think there was a lot of them that if I didn't have any stash at all, any sewing pattern stash at all, I'd be like, yes, 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 yes. Add this, add this, add this, and add them all to my cart. But I think with the experience I have, with what I know I like to wear, with the stash that I have, there's a few that I think I would add, like the caftan, this dress for sure. Um, to replace another dress that's very similar to this that I never made because it feels too complicated. This one feels simpler maybe? I don't know. Um, I, these I definitely would add. I'd add this. I mean, there's kind of a lot that I really like about this collection. I liked this one. Um, this one for sure. I really liked this one. So yeah, it could be dangerous. This one too at the, um, the next sale, but let me know what you guys think, um, about this collection. I do think it appeals to a variety of lifestyles, a variety of ages. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Otherwise that's going to do it for me today and I will see you all very soon. Bye.